Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Our next guest really doesn't need any introduction. We filmed, like, what, a workout video almost a month ago, maybe a little bit over a month ago, and she just yeah. recently won her pro card, everyone, even though I question the validity of it. We're going to have to, you know, make sure that this is actually happening. Yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can photocopy and Photoshop everything now these days, but no, everyone, Paige is back on the podcast to talk about that and just all things health and fitness. But Paige, before we even get started here, this is a question that you answered, but I didn't release on our workout video. I'm going to ask you now just so that you can verify to everyone. Aren't I the most jacked person you've ever seen when you saw me in the gym? Like your, your jaw dropped and you're like, holy shit. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. You definitely look bigger in person, especially your calves. Jeez. Like that was, I'm jealous, blown away. Like, I, I don't know how you do it. You heard that here, everyone. I'm going to save that clip and say that an IFBB pro said that I'm the most jacked person I've ever seen. So I can at least I can at least have that. But enough about me now, Paige. You just recently won your pro card. What has these last few weeks been like for you? Oh my gosh, it's been wild. Um, so the I, I won my pro card at NPC USA's, which was the second national level show I did this year. So I first did NPC Universe back. Uh, it was actually on July 4th that I competed. And then um, I came up not only one one spot short, but one point away from my pro card the first time. So that kind of gave me the confidence then going into USA's um, to to really seal the deal. But and there's three weeks in between uh, Universe and USA, so I had some time to come in better, you know, implement judges' feedback, which is essentially get leaner. Um, which is kind of the best feedback of, yeah, definitely can do that in, in three weeks. Um, so yeah, those three weeks, I mean, I was just head down grinding and then manifesting so hard of no other option, no other reality pro card is happening at USA's. Um, and, and we did it. So, well, yeah, I mean, I saw on your stories last night that you started to get a leg vein and I'm like, okay, that's the, that's the type of lean where you're just like, come on now people. That's just, it's just getting ridiculous, but you competed also in physique as well as figure. How did you do in physique? Uh, so I, I only did physique at USA's at the oh. national level. I did it. So I, I've done four shows total this year, two local level, two national level. Um, so I did figure and physique at both of the local level shows. And then I also did physique at USA's as well. Uh, just because my coach was going to be there, it's going to be easier to manage doing two divisions because it, it it does make it harder trying to manage both of that and timing and you know making sure you're you're pumped and ready for for both divisions. Um, but I actually I was one spot away from a double pro card win, so that felt really good. I love women's physique. I jumped into that starting last year was the first time I did women's physique, mainly because I love the posing. I love doing you know being able to do the posing routine. Um, and going into it, obviously I wanted to do well in women's physique, but in the back of my mind, I didn't know how well I was going to do and how I would stack up against the bigger girls, if you will. Um, and I not only held my own, but did really, really well and almost got a double pro card. So that felt really good too. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Had you gotten your double pro card, were you tempted at all to do physique or did you always figure that if you got your double pro, you would probably end up just doing figure then? Yeah, so how it works is it doesn't matter what you get your pro card in. Once you get your pro card, you have free reign to kind of do whatever division you want. Um, so I, I can do women's physique if I so choose at the pro level. I think just based on the amount of size that I would have to put on to be competitive, I will stay in figure, but never say never. You never know. Um, because at the end of the day, how my physique is framed, my strong point has never been necessarily size. Um, I do have good size, but it's, it's really my structure, you know, small waist X frame and the pretty physique, if you will, um, which I'm, my physique is just more aesthetically pleasing. So I don't have to be quite as big and that would go for figure and women's physique. And that's why I've done well in both. So you're telling me that I could win my pro card in bikini and then go and compete in bodybuilding. Uh huh. Why hasn't no one, <laughs> why hasn't no one ever tried that just for the laughs alone? Just, just, yeah. I, oh, I, well, I think the the first thing is you have to actually win your pro card in bikini. Yeah. No, I know, but like once you do that, then compete in bodybuilding in the pro level. Once you have your bikini pro card, just to see, just to see yeah. the laughs, basically of just how different that. Would. Again, people, I'm just coming up with ideas, you know, left and right here. But <laughs> what area of your body do you think that you've improved on the most from the last year that we had you on? Yeah, actually, that's that's a really great question. Um, because coming out of last year, 
more so from the front. I was, I've always been very competitive, but it's been, you know, the back pose um, and not just like my actual back, but glutes and hamstrings too, that I've needed to bring up and add a lot of density to. Um, and so specifically this year, glutes and hamstrings have come up like an exorbitant amount. Um, I actually have glutes and hamstrings. I have the, that glute ham tie in last year and I've done, you know, kind of the side by side pictures too. Last year I had a thigh gap from the back. Like I, it just, it wasn't there yet. Um, so we added an obscene amount of size to glutes, hamstrings, quads as well from the front. Um, and then also a ton of back density. Um, my rear delts also, you can see them from the back now, which is great. But, um, yeah, I need to share like a, just a year over year comparison because it's wild. I, I don't even believe it myself when I looked at it because last coming out of last year, last year was the first year that I really felt like I was competitive. Um, and you know, had, had some confidence going into the season, but looking back, even at the pictures last year, I'm like, wow, I'm even that much more leveled up. Um, and I mean, truly ready for, you know, that pro card and get, yeah, get into the pro level. What was the first thing you ate after you won your pro card? Okay. This is also hilarious. Uh, because so essentially I got off stage. I got my pro card. I'm jumping around. I'm so excited. Well, my teammate was actually uh, in the class, like height class above me. So then my coach and I, you know, ran back around and we're watching and whatever. And she, and then she ended up winning her pro card. So then we're just like celebrating, screaming stuff. So like my mind is not on food at all. And that's typically how it goes. Um, I've, like you think about food leading up. I would have it. my mouth open as I'm walking <laughs> off the stage with my pro card saying, stick something in there, feed me. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, for me, it's, it's more, it's more like focused on the result, right? Like I want to win. And when I do win, like that's, you know, that's what I'm really focused on. So, um, my teammate and I, after we won the pro cards, whatever, we were going to go and try to get these like cookies, um, the o OC, OCB or whatever cookies, they had free ones for the competitors. The only one that they had that was free was a banana chocolate chip. And I was like, I don't, I love bananas, but like, I don't want those near my cookies. I want my cookies to be nothing to do with fruit. Um, so I, I was like going up to my hotel room to FaceTime my husband anyways. And I was just like a really long answer to what did I eat first? Like take as much time as you want. Jeez. <laughs> so, um, and I was starving too. Like show day, typically, you know, I'm real hungry because my coach, he gives me the food just to get that look, but like we don't want to spill over anything. We want to be careful. So I was starving and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't just eat crap because I need to have something more satiating. So the first thing I ate off stage, I went into the fridge in my hotel room and I had a couple pieces of chicken breast. <laughs> and then, and then after that, so after universe, um, I figured out that like a post-show snack that I love is chocolate rice cakes and almond butter. So then after like uh, myself and all my teammates got done competing and stuff too, um, we all just smell like I brought down a, you know, full thing of chocolate rice cakes and peanut butter, or, uh, almond butter. And we all just went ham on that. Um, and then we went out to dinner. We got some good food. Uh, like we went to a steakhouse. So I got steak, potatoes, mac and cheese, you know, all the good stuff, fries, bread, um, all that stuff. And then I did go back to my hotel room too. Instacart, it's, you know, ice cream and some cookies and stuff like that. So I did have some good stuff, but it is kind of ironic because the first things that I ate was chicken breast and freaking rice cakes. So <laughs> again, everyone, we are talking to a psychopath in sheep's clothing, but you know, Hey, more power, <laughs> more power to you that she's able to do that. And we talked about this before we started recording, but you also went to gold's gym and that's a place that I've always wanted to go to if I'm ever in the area. What was that like yeah. walking in there and just like, cause that is like the premier gym in this country. Oh my God. Yeah. And the fact too, um, so there's four of my teammates competing out there and my coaches out there too. Three out of the four of us went pro at this show, which is like, okay. How bad is that fourth person of. feeling then though? <laughs> oh, well, okay. So our fourth teammate, um, this is her first year competing. She, this is her third show. The first two shows that she did this year, she won the overalls. She is so talented, so genetically gifted. Uh, she's, I mean, 
she's going to be able to get it. Like if she went to the next national show, I wouldn't be surprised if, if she got it there. So I'm not digging well at her, her everyone. I'm just making a joke that if I was the one person <laughs> out of the four that didn't want to pro card, everyone else would be celebrating there. And I'd just be like, Oh God. No, it's a fair, it's a fair question though. And my other two teammates too, it was really cool because, um, they've been, you know, doing national shows either the last two to three years as well. And they've also had shows, um, I think both, both of them last year where they were also one spot away from that pro card. And then me this year also being one spot away at universe. And then I did, um, actually get my placing in women's physique first. So then also came off stage with that one spot away. And I was like, I swear to God, if if it doesn't happen in figure, I'm going to be so disappointed. But, um, so all, all three of us, like, we know what it feels like to put in the work for years, get that close and not get it. So the fact that all of us were able to, you know, seal the deal and get our pro cards, like it felt so good. And then having my coach there, um, you know, to, he got a video of me coming off the stage with my pro card and like just being able to celebrate. And then my you know teammate came off and I'm just jumping all around, giving her a hug, like being able to celebrate with her. And then, yeah, the next day being able to go out to gold's gym, the Mecca of bodybuilding where all the OG people train, like it, I mean, the whole weekend felt surreal, but like if someone were to tell me, Oh, when you win your pro card, this is going to be the scenario. And this is, you know, how the context of it, I I would never believe it. Like, it sounds like a dream come true. And it really was. So, and we went to, um, I have before we went to Gold's gym, got pancakes, got a really good breakfast. So then we were all fueled and then went to Gold's gym, got in a great workout in the California sun, um, and got a great pump. And it was, it was incredible. So you were also in Minneapolis for a week. Then you went to the pro show basically for a week. Has your husband just been loving life with not having to do with you <laughs> for that amount of time? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. I feel like I've been traveling so much. Um, it's wild, but no, he's, he's been doing some traveling too. And he's always busy with work. So uh, he's been staying busy and just supporting me. Um, and yeah, so we were able to like FaceTime and stuff like that. And when I was at a university, he actually also couldn't make it, but he was, him and his family were tuned into the live stream. Um, they were all over at his house watching, watching me compete and stuff like that and cheering me on, which felt really good. Um, and then, yeah, I was able to FaceTime him right after, but he was at, he was at a bachelor party in Nashville. Um, so he was having a grand old time while, while I was having a grand old time too, but um, yeah, we're both very supportive of each other. So. Tell him if he breaks the code, I'll rat him out. And the code is you never tell women what happens at a bachelor party. I was at one two weeks in, or last weekend. That's the code. Okay. So if he breaks it, you let me know. And then I'll have his membership revoked <laughs> from, from the club. I'm just picturing the, uh, the insane visual of I go on walks all the time through the neighborhood and a lot of neighbors have their windows open. If I were to walk past that house and see them viewing a bodybuilding show on a TV and just seeing all these people with their, in their bikinis, I'd be like, what the hell's going on in that family? But no, that's, that's just my yeah. crazy mind at work. You know, everyone. But what are your current plans now? Are you just going to take the rest of the year off or where are you at right now? Yep. Yep. That's the plan. So I got to put on more size, um, which I mean, I feel like that's, that's always going to be the feedback, you know, how, no matter how good you are, you can always get better and always get bigger and nail things even more. So yes, um, putting on size. And then, so right now my physique is very balanced, you know, top to bottom, front to back, but specific areas we're trying to bring up. Um, so shoulders, Um, and then also, you know, that includes rear delts as well, because you have massive shoulders and rear delts that helps really frame your physique and it gives you a competitive edge. So, um, we brought up my shoulders quite a bit last year, but we're really going to be hammering that. And then back density as well. I have good width already, but like really adding that dense muscle. Um, and that, I mean, again, that's been feedback consistently. Um, and that's something, it just takes time to add. And I've been doing that over the last, you know, five, six years. Um, but continuing to do that and then building out my quad sweep a little bit more from the front again, because that gives you the more dramatic X frame both on top and bottom then. Um, so then I can, I can hang with the big dogs and, and, uh, we do have plans to have my pro debut next year and compete in multiple pro shows. Um, you know, probably at least three, depending on the schedule schedule comes up in December. So, you know, we're going to be strategic and, and figure out what shows we want to do. Um, but I'm really excited and I feel so confident with, you know, my coach having him behind me and guiding me um, because he's he's a pro. He's an Olympian. He's been to the Arnold himself. So and he has other pros and Olympians that he um, is, is currently coaching and has coached. So he has a lot of experience. He knows what he's doing. So I can kind of just relax and let him take the reins. And that's that's a great feeling to be able to trust him. 
Any plans on doing the pro show that's only an hour away drive from you? Hmm. Perhaps, perhaps. I've I've wondered, does Wisconsin have any pro bodybuilding shows? They don't, no. So Chicago Pro is the closest one. Um, and that would be a really cool show for me to do too, because that was actually my first amateur show I ever did back in 2019 was the Chicago Pro. So that's going to be like a, a full circle kind of moment in itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, just like proximity wise to me and then timing of the show that, that one, I feel like might end up in the, in the rotation pro shows for next year for me. I've always found it weird how Wisconsin, Minnesota, the Dakotas and Iowa all don't have any pro shows. So that's five States right there where you can't even go to a pro, at least that I think of, but I know there's St. Louis, I know there's Chicago. And then, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe they should, they should try to, and you think, especially with Minnesota, they should definitely have that there, but what would be your best piece of advice for someone who's like traveling when they're four weeks out or three weeks out when you were going to Minneapolis, because that's not easy to do (laughs) and still maintain a routine. So what's the best piece of advice you have for someone if they ever get caught in that situation? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I actually had a lot more travel than that, even throughout this prep of, you know, St. Louis going to Chicago, going here, going there. Um, Essentially you just, you just have to prepare ahead of time. And the main thing is your food. So for me, um, I have my sponsor, Mom Meals, who is able to, so he'll, he'll ship food to my house if it's on a weekly basis. And it, it depends like timing of the trip and stuff like that too. Um, this year for most of my trips, I just had him, you know, ship me food to my house and then I packed it up and, and brought it with me. I've also had him earlier this year, uh, just ship the food right to my hotel. And then I have it ready for me there, which is also really nice. And then you don't have to worry about it while you travel. Um, but if you don't use like a meal prep service, you can also do it yourself and just, uh, I, I always try to make it simple of like bulk proteins, bulk carbs. So like I'll do, you know, a couple pounds of chicken, beef, ground turkey, and then rice, potatoes, um, that kind of thing. You can even, I mean, once you get to your location to a good idea for rice, you can actually just go to a local like Chinese restaurant and have them give you some plain steamed rice. Um, or, uh, I also, once I get to wherever I'm going for traveling for either work or competitions, um, I use Instacart and then I'll have them just deliver, you know, whatever I need. So like Tupperware containers to heat your food up with, um, you know, oats, like more of the stuff that you don't want to pack. Um, all that stuff is, is super convenient, you know, rice cakes, that kind of stuff of like, just have it delivered to you. Or if you're not lazy like me, um, (laughs) then you can actually go to the store and do it too. And just like stock up. Um, but yeah, when I was at universe, I actually had them also add a microwave to my order. Cause I got it from Walmart and that was clutch because otherwise I would have had to take the elevator up and down every single time to heat up my food um, and stuff like that. So yeah, another tip is you can call the hotel ahead of time, make sure like the number one thing is if there's a mini fridge, if there's not, you can also get creative. You can, you know, bring a collapsible cooler with you. You can fill it up with ice um, every day and just like put that in Ziploc bags or whatever too. Um, and then if there is a microwave and if there's not, most of the time, if it's if it's not for a competition, because again, competition microwaves are, are sparse, um, but you can actually special request a lot of times having a microwave and they'll just bring it up to your room for you. A lot of times they just have extras um, sitting around. So that's also a great option. I have also brought a pressure cooker with me before on a plane. That was that was like years ago, but I was out of town for two weeks straight. So I actually brought a pressure cooker with me and I cooked all my food in the pressure cooker because there also wasn't a microwave in the room and I couldn't get one. Um, so yeah, you just kind of have to be creative. Um, oh, another example. Last year I got like a, it was like a, almost like a pizza maker type thing and it, worked out to be pretty much like a little brittle and I could just like use it to cook. They have like those camping, whatever, uh, like stovetop portable ones too, that you just plug in the wall. You can, you know, just do that. So there's a lot of options. You kind of just have to think out of the box, um, and see what works for you. No, it's yeah, it's all individualized as well. And you just gotta, it's trial and error, which again, this should be the name of the podcast in the first place, but (laughs) I'm too stubborn to really change it. But one thing I noticed when we were filming in the gym was, I would have thought more people would have been staring because I, the other gym that I work at or not, not the other gym that I work at, but the other gym that I filmed that there have been cases where when I'm filming someone, there is a little bit more attention, but in that gym alone that we were at, you only had like one or two people staring. And there was one lady where I remember she was kind of giving you the, the eye, like 
this in shape piece of, you know, whatever. But <laughs> that was like the only negative one. But as you've gotten more and more into this lifestyle, do you find that you're getting less attention in the gym or more attention than them? Because I remember like six years ago when I started this, if you were to probably have, if we were to probably have filmed in the gym, you, there probably would have been a lot more stares just because people weren't so used to seeing it. Yeah. So in the context of the gym, I think it's, you know, a little bit different versus like everyday life. Um, and the gym that I currently go to, it's a Metroflex, Metroflex MPE. And that gym is, I mean, the people there are great, very respectful. You know, there's other bodybuilders. It's a, it's a very like bodybuilder centric environment. So with that, if I do get like looks or whatever, it's people that I know and being like, yeah, bro, you look great. Like that kind of thing. Like it's not <laughs> disrespectful, or weird. If I go to more of a corporate type gym or, you know, big box gym, that kind of thing, yes, I will get the stairs. Um, admittedly, I kind of avoid eye contact uh, with people in the gym, you know, unless it's like obviously my home gym and I'm more comfortable. But like I just tend to try to stay in my own lane, in my own, you know, kind of like world and whatever because I, I don't like getting stared at. So like if I just ignore it that tends to work well too. Um, and then it's, it just isn't as much of a thing. So, but yes, luckily nowadays I'm, I'm very blessed to be in a good gym with a good environment and great people. Should I tell the audience what I told that one guy when he asked me if we were in a relationship, <laughs> <laughs> I told her that I was her escort. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the type of energy that we bring to here, but you know, so that, that got, that got a nice laugh, but there's just, I mean, it's so hilarious. Some of the reactions that you get in gym specifically, but yeah, yes. I mean, being someone who's mainly just worked out, you know, in homemade gyms for the last, you know, whatever, ever since really I got out of college, I didn't really experience it that much. So it was, you know, fascinating to see, but just at this moment, has it reality hit you yet that like, Oh my God, I'm a little fish in a big pond now. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm really glad it worked out the way that it did of me not getting my pro credit universe and getting it at USA's and I can actually go into this a little bit more too, mindset wise. Um, so going into universe and this prep in general, I thought it was possible to get my pro card. I was like, yes, I'm working for this. I see it. I see the vision. You know, I think it's very reasonable to get my pro card. However, that really just like utmost confidence and going into it, knowing for a fact you know, I earned, I, I could earn it. I deserved it. I was ready. That didn't happen until USA is. And actually going into universe, um, I realized kind of subconsciously that I wasn't as confident as what I should have been. And the thing that made me realize, and I was so pissed at myself after the fact, because whatever was, um, at universe after prejudging was when I text my coach, I'm like, did you see where I was in the lineup, whatever? Because I thought I was maybe, you know, fifth, sixth, fourth position. Because um, there was a bigger lineup, too. There was like 10 or 11 girls. And um, he texts me back and he goes, you're in the, the second or third place spot right now. Like, you, you're you fighting for a pro card. And I stopped dead in my tracks and I just went, oh, my God. Like, that reality didn't even occur to me. And, like, the night before the show, I was like, dang, we're looking really good. Like, I could do some damage here. But then you get backstage and you see all these other women that – also look incredible. And I mean, universe is a massively competitive show because they also have uh, all the masters competitors and classes there too. Um, you know, I, I did the open, but like th th do not underestimate masters competitors. They will, they will kick your butt. Um, uh, kick your butt on the stage. Not, not physically. They're all sweet sweethearts, but regardless, you never know. You never know. That, that's true. Yes. <laughs> keep, yeah. Keep one eye open. Um, but so after I got uh, off of the stage and, you know, found out where I was at prejudging and realized, oh, my God, I could I could do this here. I realized I didn't even pack an outfit that I would have been excited or proud to celebrate a pro card. In. And I was like, th at that moment, I, I realized, wow, I really underestimated myself. And it, again, it was like subconscious because going into it, I'm like, yes, I'm competing for my pro card. But subconsciously, I don't think I, I realized that it was a real possibility and something that could actually happen. So, um, again, universe being not only one spot, but what point, one point away, that showed me, okay, yes, you, you are ready. You do deserve it. If I implement ju the judge's feedback between that show and USA's, 
then I really can, you know, get this pro card. So um, if I would have gotten it at universe, I wouldn't have been, I don't think I would have been like mentally and emotionally ready to receive it fully. Like it would have come as more of a surprise versus again, um, as, as I was going through those three weeks specifically between those two shows, the amount of things and the amount of ways that I manifested the pro card win of like, you know, people texting me like, Oh, you know, text me, message me on Instagram, like, Oh, you're so close. Like, you know, but like, great job. You should be so proud, blah, blah, blah. And I messaged so many people back, like, I'm, I'm bringing it home at USA's I'm bringing it home. Like it's mine. I'm, go- I'm going to get it. I wrote it on my calendar. Um, you know, I made like a pro card lead up reel of, you know, like just manifesting, like I am getting this pro card and telling it to myself over and over and over again. Um, and just saying it out loud to everybody too. Like, Oh, when I get back from USA's with my pro card, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to sign the wall at my gym. I'm going to sign, you know, my coach, wall. all this, all this stuff that allowed me to get to a point mentally where once I did get it, I, I was ready to receive it. So it didn't, it didn't feel like a surprise. It didn't feel like actually unreal. Like I was already mentally connected with this pro card. Um, so it allowed it to sink in more and kind of after like having that sink in though, that is the point that you realize, okay, yes, now, now I'm in the pro league and that means we're starting at the bottom again. And, you know, we got to work our way back up just like I did at the NPC level. I have to do the same thing at the IFBB pro level. Um, but to me, like, that's so freaking exciting. And again, that's why I love this sport is because you're always trying to get better. And a, a quote that I really like too is win or lose the next day, you still have to go back to work. It doesn't like that pro card doesn't change the areas that you have to improve on. If I didn't get the pro card, I still would be, you know, trying to grow my shoulders, my quads, my back, my everything. So it doesn't really change what you do after you're still always just trying to get better. Now you're just doing it and being able to compete at that next level. Have you received judges feedback yet about what the difference was between you and the first place person? Or do you know just from viewing like what, why they won? Yes. Yes. So I did get um, feedback back from Sandy was the head judge at at USA's. Um, Well, and the first thing that I'm super proud of, uh, I've never gotten this feedback before in my entire life, entire bodybuilding career. She said, your conditioning was good. You do not need to be any leaner. That is the first time I've heard that in my life. Every single show I've done, it's always get leaner, get leaner, get leaner, get leaner. We were lean enough, which, wow, that feels so good. Um, So, and then her feedback again was adding density in in my back and and quads. Um, But then she also provided some like comparison pictures of like me next to the first, first place woman, which... Also, the the woman that won first place, she won the overall <laughs> as well. And arguably, if, you know, if she wasn't there and I, if I would have placed first, looking at kind of like the, the top placings and stuff, I probably would have ended up like second or third overall in, in all figure, which also feels really good. But um, essentially, one, the first place woman was wider up top. So she had wider clavicles. So taking up more space. Uh, more dramatic X frame. She did have more of that quad sweep um, as well, and then her shoulders were pre- pretty massive. Um, but I had my strong points too. Like I was, my physique was more aesthetically pleasing. You know, I had some really good detail in my legs and stuff like that too. Um, so I more than held my own. And I mean, I I'm okay uh, taking second to her too. Of again, looking at her physique, I'm like, yes, she deserved to win, and and clearly she won the overall. She won it all. So, you know, if I had to lose to somebody, like that's that's who I want to to get second place to. And you you learn more from your losses than you do your wins. So, you know, the fact that I didn't get that class win, which I obviously really wanted. Um, that's only feeling me more. And again, of like when I see the gaps in my physique compared to hers, it's just so motivating of, yes, that's what I want to work on. And that's what I'm going to be focused on and just grinding so hard in the gym to, to improve on those areas. What do you get if you win the overall? Is it just more prize money? Cause you already got your, you already get your pro card. Is there anything else that they give you? Um, it, I mean, it's more just the title and again, of like, we we're all going into this to win. Right. So like, yeah, I I wanted to win it all. You know, I wanted to to be in that overall um, as I've been many times at the local level and, you know, won 
however many, I think six total uh, overall titles at the local level. So I, I did, I did want to win. Um, but again, you know, you can only control what you can control. You can't control who shows up. There's no defense. Well, well, you can. But, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, if you are a, if you have good sportsmanship and you compete and, you know, play by the rules, which again, reminder for everybody, I'm an accountant. I work in public accounting as an audit manager. Um, so I play by the rules. Audit your competitors. <laughs> audit. Yeah. Audit my competitors. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure they're playing by the rules and that, yeah. Expose them if they're not. Shit, I'm gonna have to be nicer to her now in case I get audited. I got a lot of dirty laundry, so. Oh, so Paige, the greatest guest that I've ever had, and just the most perfect person that I've ever met in my entire life. You know, <laughs> yeah. But so. Hey, don't don't worry. I don't work for the IRS. This is like I just go. Oh, into thank like, God. Yeah. Well, then. Yeah. Then screw yeah, you. Like screw corporation. you. The usual. <laughs> yeah. You know all that stuff. You're small. All that crap. Yeah. All that stuff. All right. So we can <laughs> we, we can we can get back to the normal stuff. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Again, everyone, I'm joking because there was one guy that commented on one of my last podcasts. Why are you so mean to the guests? It's like you don't understand sarcasm, guy. But just to yeah. just to get that out there. But you signed the wall. What was that moment like? And did you use different quotes? I think I saw for different walls. Where'd you come up with the quotes? Yeah. Um... So the, I signed the wall at my home gym, Metroflex. And so that quote was, um, you're stronger than you think you're more capable than, you know, and you're closer than you realize keep going. And so that quote to me, um, because with my pro card and just in bodybuilding in general, and, you know, through my Instagram account, my goal and my passion is to inspire other people, um, for them to see what I've been able to accomplish and be like, wow, if she can do that, I can do that too. And not just in the aspect of bodybuilding, any avenue in life, you know, if you're willing to put in the work, you can achieve dreams that seem crazy and uh, like are never going to happen. So for that being at, you know, my home gym, I wanted it to represent of like, again, just inspiring the people that I'm around every day to go after their goals um, and, and really, you know, feel like they can achieve whatever they, they want to in life. Um, and then the quote that I wrote on the wall at my coach's gym, Snap Fitness down in Kenosha. So the posing room, they have um, a pro wall as well. And for that one, I wrote, when every decision matters, ask yourself, WWPD, what would a pro do? Um, and that actually, I, I kind of came up with, so um, a couple of my coworkers started a slogan of WWPD, what would Paige do? And so, um, along that same context of like, that's kind of what like sparked the idea. But, you know, as I was an amateur coming up, I, I heard on a podcast of, okay, if you want to be a pro, you have to act like one. And that's part of like manifesting every single, every single day, every single decision, you know, when you're in the gym, train like a pro. If you don't, obviously you're not going to get to the pro level. Um, and now, now that I am a pro too, it's still applicable right? Like I, I need to act like a pro day in and day out, you know, and I'm going to be competing with pros. So I feel like it's just something of it's transferable to both like the local level and the pro level too. Um, and I, it's, I think there's sometimes a disconnect to when people say, Oh, I want to do X, Y, Z, but then, okay, how do you get from that want to making it a reality? And, you know, all the steps in between, like you have to be focused day in and day out and check yourself, audit yourself, if you will, like, look back at your day. At the end of the day, what does your day look like? If you repeated that day over and over and over again for the next five years, would that get you to where you need to be? Or, you know, did, did you fall short? Did you make excuses? Um, you know, and are you doing everything you can in order to get closer to that goal? So it's something that I like mindset wise. So how is acting like a pro different from acting like an amateur? Cause I have had people like say that before, but just so like, what, what would be acting like a pro in, in different scenarios be different than an amateur? So again, at the amateur level, you, you need to act like a pro too. So, I mean, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it like acting like an amateur, but say you don't practice your posing every day, say, oh, you're weighing out your food and you're like, eh, it's three grams over. Who cares? You know, eh, it's, it's 0.1 ounces over. Who cares? That kind of thing of like, you need to make sure that you're on point 
all the time. Um, and you're not like, uh, so I work with a therapist. I've been working with a therapist for, for a number of years. That's if you listen to the first episode when I was on here with you, um, that's actually how I ended up finding my coach because they're really good friends too. But um, she puts it as non-negotiables. Um, so that goes for, you know, mental health and what I do to maintain my mental well-being, but also like in the context of bodybuilding, having those non-negotiables in place that you execute on every single day. Like, all of those little things add up and they need to be non-negotiables and you can't slack on those. And if you do, you'll probably fall short, especially posing people. Oh my gosh. Practice your posing, get a posing coach. You can have the best physique in the world. If you can't present it and you're not practicing it and you're not practicing holding your posing too, you can, you can lose a placing. You can lose a pro card. You can lose an overall. You, you probably will, right? Like, it, it comes down to every single detail. Um, and so executing on that every single day. Is it hard for you to not just go all in on this, like mentally, because I know so many people that they disappear into the sport and like, if they don't place as well, then it just completely derails their lives. Oh. And I know so many people that fall through that category. So do you yeah. have any ways to not have everything invested in it. So in case you do fail, which I mean, you are going to fail. It's, it's inevitable. Like everyone fails. And I'm not, I'm not saying that like, Oh, you suck, but I'm saying like, everyone's going to, I mean, even Andrea Shaw is going to fail at some point in the future, but like there it's how, have you prepared yourself for that? And like not being so invested that it completely derails your life. Like I've seen for a lot of other people. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, it's kind of funny because when I started bodybuilding, again, it wasn't until last year that I'd, got actually pretty good at this and, you know, really started being super competitive. Um, so I've, I've lost up until like, again, before last year, I lost way more times than I won. And it kind of sounds funny, but, um, before bodybuilding, I didn't necessarily, aside from like school and academics and like work and stuff, I'm, I've always been a high performer in that regard, but like, sports or like hobbies or you know I had a horse for 10 years that I competed with there was nothing that I was really super good at (laughs) if you will um and so this is kind of that first taste of winning and being really good at something for me so because I've had this background of you know having to work really hard and failing over and over again but you know still kind of keep like So if you fail, again, you learn more from those failures than you do your wins. Um, And everybody is going into these competitions wanting to win, right? But one, there's sub goals that you can have as well in addition to wanting to win. And this is also something I've worked with my therapist on too, of just like, you know, mindset and everything. So I remember last year, you know, of course, wanted to win, but at the same time too, Um, starting last year, I wanted to make sure my mindset going into the show was on point. I was focused. I was ready. Um, my posing, I was executing on that, my individual routine, I was executing, you know, exactly how I wanted to on that. Um, so there's, there's lots of sub goals that you can have within the sport because ultimately it's, it's not just that end goal of winning and it's not even just show day. It's outside of that. It's, all the little wins that you get throughout prep that lead up to that ultimate day. And, you know, hopefully that ultimate win, but if that doesn't happen, you need to give yourself credit for everything that you've accomplished in the meantime. Like, you know, if you're hitting PRs in the gym, getting all your cardio in, like like giving that your all, you need to give yourself credit for that. And also always look back to what you, you know, looked like when you started too. Like that's, that's a win in itself. If you're bettering yourself and then not only physically, but mentally too, like, at least for me, again, it transfers into every area of my life, work, um, everything where I execute on, on everything at a, at a high degree, um, because that's just who I am. And I've always been a type A person, but you throw a bodybuilding in that. Now I'm like a type double A plus, I don't know. So, um, in those regards too, you can't just focus on what happens on show day, you really have to focus on all the small wins leading up and give yourself credit for that because that's huge. And it's not easy. How are you preparing yourself to meet off season page 
Because let's be honest, I mean, it's going to be in a couple of weeks or maybe a few months where you're not going to be looking this lean. Are you preparing yourself mentally to accept that? No. Um, and by, by no, I mean, for me personally, there's no preparation needed. So, um, it's interesting because, and I share this on the last podcast too, growing up in high school and, uh, even early like college days, I struggled with an eating disorder, restrictive eating. Um, and once I found fitness and weightlifting specifically, and was able to eat more food and, you know, I started with tracking macros and then ended up starting with bodybuilding coaches and stuff like that. Um, it actually kind of like fixed my relationship with food and also fixed my relationship of how I view my body in the regard of bodybuilding has made me feel like I have a hundred percent control over what I look like. Um, so, you know, before bodybuilding, I always was like, I want to be skinnier. I don't need skinnier. I'm fat. I don't like the way I look like. I don't like whatever. Um, you go through bodybuilding, you see, oh, if I execute on this plan, I can look great. I can look what I want to look like. So I feel like, you know, even in the off season, like I get thick. Okay. I, you know, we, we add, we added, um, at what part of your body does it get thickest? What was that? What part of your body gets thickest during off season? Um, so interestingly enough, I, I gained body fat very evenly throughout my body, which has also changed, um, each off season too. But now at this point, like it's, it's very evenly distributed. Um, but yeah, so like for me, even when I am at my thickest point of, again, I lost, I think 35 total pounds this year, <clears throat> I normally get up to like 155 during the off season and then come down to 125, 120, um, ish for, for prep. So I know that it's in within my control of like, oh, if I wanted to lose weight, I could just execute on the plan and lose weight. Like it's no big deal. It's also keeping in the context of the weight that you put on is productive and needed in order to add size. Like you're not just, I mean, ideally you're not just adding body fat. Um, and for me to post show, post show is harder than prep, but I've never really struggled that hard with reverse dieting more so in the aspect of again I'm, I'm very good at following a plan I'm a very black and white person so I'm if I'm on plan I'm always on plan that kind of thing um but as long as you set yourself up for success in that off season two of you know making sure you're staying on your reverse diet then you're setting yourself up to not like gain a ton of body fat super quick and keeping your body composition in a good spot so, um, I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like back in 20, you know, 19, 2020 of my kind of first off seasons. Yes, it was harder seeing myself add that weight. And again, it wasn't my body composition wasn't quite as good. Um, when I got to those higher points in, in body weight than what it is now, but still, if I always kept in the back of my mind, this is for a reason, this is for a purpose. And actually on my Instagram highlights, I have saved not only all of my weekly and sometimes multi, you know, times throughout the week check-ins for prep, but I also have every single one of my off seasons, every single week of check-ins that I send to my coach. I have those saved on my Instagram with my weight <laughs> and the pictures. So people can see what I look like in every season. And I think that's something big too of, I mean, a lot of competitors, they don't want to share what they're looking like in their thick season. For me, like I'm still in the gym in a sports bra and leggings and, you know, I'm just, I own what I look like at any point because I know what I'm working for. Um, and I know I have complete control over my body too, at any point in time. Was there a, a single moment when you really gained that control or was it just a progression over time at, at, at like what point where you're like, okay, I, I finally feel like I have control over my body. Yeah. I think it was a small progression over time. Um, and I, I think it took probably, I don't know, maybe till like 2020, 2021 or so of realizing that I was in control and like realizing that I have accepted my body. Um, so yeah, it was definitely like a small progression over time. And again, like back in college and grad school, 
I was doing this myself. I was just, you know, following macros and learning all the information I could online and soaking everything in. So it's, it's been, you know, a steady progression over a number of years, just learning what it means to be a bodybuilder and learning, you know, that, that balance too, um, and learning how to stick to a plan consistently. Well, I asked you this last time. I'm going to ask you it again. When we do have you on in a year to give us an update <laughs> on what you've been up to, Paige, where would you like to be at in your journey? And it, it doesn't even have to be like a year from today exactly. We can do the end of next year, so after your season's done. Yeah. So, again, I create goals that scare me <laughs> and may seem may seem. If you say win the Olympia, I'm hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> um. But no, next year, my goal would be to win a pro show uh, and go to the Olympia. So that's that's the big scary goal out there. Um, you know, and if it doesn't happen next year, then I'm going to reevaluate and, you know, keep growing and keep improving and seeing what I need to do in order to make that happen. Um, but I think just based on my potential and, and based on what I could do in the sport and have done and the progress I've made just in one year, you know, last year to this year. I think I can do it and I, I will do it one day. Is it harder as a pro when you look and see that a lot of the divisions have winners that have won it like over multiple years and they have their reigns? Is it hard to sort of see that and just realize that like they're the standard? Because like I could imagine anyone that's like competing against like Andrea Shaw just being like, okay, well, she's probably going to win it for like the next three or four years. So like, what am I even doing here? Like, so where, where, where do you find that motivation and knowing that like a lot of these people, like they don't have the, they don't have it in the bag, but like, it's going to be very, very hard to dethrone them. For sure. Yeah. And again, I mean, I just see it as motivating and a challenge of like, okay, if that's what the standard is, that's what we're going to shoot for. And I, I am lucky and blessed to be in a position of, again, just like my natural frame and how I, I look, it's, it is very aesthetic and that does help in regards of, of bodybuilding. And I just need to add more size. So, you know, I, I think it's possible. And honestly, you, you can't, you, you never say never. <laughs> no. Absolutely. And again, you know, Paige, I cannot thank you enough for coming back on and giving an update to us and everyone. If you haven't seen the workout video that we post, I mean, it has been getting a lot of views. I think it's like over like 4,000 now, but like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's slowly getting there. But the only thing is that I couldn't monetize it because we, of course the, the audio in the background, but I, I really don't care at all. But again, <laughs> everyone go and check out Paige's Instagram page. You will be inspired to get off that couch and eat all those Twinkies. But again, Paige, thank you so much for coming back on. It was an absolute delight. And I look forward to seeing what the future has in store for you. Absolutely. Can't wait. I will see you next year. And never tell me if you're in the Minneapolis area ever again. I was too embarrassed. And let no, I'm, jo- <laughs> I'm joking, everyone. No, it's, but I do admit for all the crap that I give these guys, it, it's, it's so embarrassing for me where I just like, Oh my God, this is an insane level of dedication. That's why I have to joke with them because otherwise I would go crazy myself just looking in the reflection. So Again, oh, everyone. One thing I do want to highlight too. What did I tell you when we finished the workout? When you're dropping me back off at the hotel after the workout, what did what did I tell you? What did I tell you is going to happen? You're the greatest looking person ever. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, you said <laughs> no. You said you're. I'm gonna. You next time we talk, I'm getting my pro card. You're gonna be talking to a pro, and who is right? <laughs> I mean, we're ending it here. So now's the time where I finally admit <laughs> that. Um, I may have sent some money to the judges and we agreed that this would be a nice practical joke where we were like, let's just play along with it. And then next year when she goes to a pro show, we'll be like, no, that's not a real pro card. Like, are you, are you dickus? Look at yourself. So I, we're, we're going to let this play out for the whole rest of the year, but just because you're being, you're being a little, you know, selfish right now, just self promoting yourself. I'm going to have to let you, although we did have that agreement in the video where you did say, if you ever start referring to yourself in your third person, anyone can punch her in the face. So People, if you see her at her job or any, imagine that someone at your job just clocks you right in the face because you start referring to yourself in the third person. No, I'm joking, everyone. And I'm going to stop right now before things get way out of hand because I'm on a roll right now. But again, Paige, thank you <laughs> so really much. He's really bad at admitting when he's wrong and yeah, when I'm right. Oh, never admit when I'm That's... wrong. That's the thing. That's the, I mean, my fiance has <laughs> learned that the hard way. I said, if you want, no, I'm, I'm joking. I'll admit, I'll admit <laughs> to her, everyone. I'll, I'll cave immediately. But um, no, yeah, again, everyone go and check her out. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day everyone.